Greetings, friends. My name is Peter, and thank you very much for watching Retro Unscripted. Today's episode is number 17, and it's all about Funko Land. Now, my experience with Funko Land began in the summer of 1998. Before then, the only way I had known about Funko Land were through ads in video game magazines, generally towards the back, where they would have a bunch of listings for video game prices, and they would say you could mail your games back in for trade-in credit. Uh, we didn't have any Funko Land stores around here. The only video game stores that we had were independent places. Um, in my particular area, stores such as Fantasy Realms or Video Game Castle were the big places to go and had filled that role admirably for a number of years. But Funko Land was something different. It was an actual company that was focused on video game sales, and they ranged from everything from NES games all the way up to the newest consoles, which were the, uh, the PlayStation and the Nintendo 64, and then the Dreamcast later on during my tenure. Um, so in 1998 in the summer, I went and I almost literally begged for a job. Uh, I was working at a call center at the time, but I knew that I wanted to work with video games for a living. And this, I thought, was as close as I would ever get. So I quickly threw together a resume and I talked to the district manager and I, I looked him in the eye and I said, I will do whatever it takes to have an opportunity to work at one of your stores. I have a bunch of video game knowledge that I'm willing to share and all I'm asking is a chance. And he gave me that chance, and I was grateful for that. Uh, for a period of about 18 months or so, uh, I worked for Funko Land as an assistant manager, as a store manager in training, and finally as a store manager across two different locations. My favorite times were my assistant manager times when I was working in West Springfield, Mass. Um, that was great because the store was just opening, not a lot of people knew who we were, so it was up to us to kind of spread the word by treating every customer with the utmost amount of care and respect. Um, you really have to because nobody knows who you are, so you have to forge those customer relationships from the ground up, and I loved doing that. And the way that I was able to do that uh, was just through showing off my knowledge of games and my passion of games. Uh, and when people saw that I was passionate and knowledgeable, uh, they would buy from me or they would have their friends come in and buy from me. And that was a big help and helped our store grow before very long. There are two distinct memories that I have from the uh, Funko Land store in West Springfield as an assistant manager. The first is something that I uh, talked about in the previous episode, which was uh, being convinced by the store manager, his name is Justin, uh, to try this game called uh, Metal Gear Solid. Uh, I played the demo of Metal Gear Solid uh, in the store, and I was kind of chilly on it. Uh, stealth wasn't my thing. It was too slow. It was too plodding. And Justin kind of wagged his finger, and he said, No, I played this at the manager's conference. Uh, you need to give it more time. So when we got copies in the store, we opened one up for customers to try, or for us to try, really. And... Between Justin and myself, we were actually able to play all the way through the campaign, and I was blown away by the storytelling, by the narration, uh, the voice work, uh, the epic boss battles, all of it. And if it wasn't for that experience, I don't think I would have bought any of the Metal Gear Solid games that followed, so that's one memory that I'm very grateful for, because uh, I would have skipped out on a pretty cool video game series if it wasn't for Justin, so that was neat. The other memory is uh, WCW NWO Revenge. Uh, we actually used to have competitions after the store would close where four of us, uh, Justin, myself, and a couple of the other employees in the store would stay after close and have some epic ring matches where I would always lose. There would be battle royales and, and uh, handicap matches and such, and I, I just was terrible. Uh, but we had a good time. Um, because it was just four friends playing video games with no pressure. Um, we actually played on a GX TV uh, similar to mine. As a matter of fact, the exact same thing. So that was fun. And the other neat thing was that uh, 
playing WCW NWO Revenge actually ignited some interest for me in wrestling and wrestling video games. As a matter of fact, um, I wound up buying wrestling video games pretty consistently from that point forward. Um, I don't have Revenge in my library currently, but I have WWF WrestleMania 2000 and No Mercy and then the SmackDown series. And even though I don't watch the shows anymore, uh, I still play those games and have memories of how I actually got into those things because of the staff that I worked with, and that was pretty cool. So uh, in the spring of 1999, after having a successful holiday season and working my tail off, I got promoted. Uh, I became a manager in training and got moved to a different store in Springfield, Mass. Um, and that was a big challenge. Um, I went from having someone above me who could kind of cushion me if I made mistakes to being responsible for everything. And I struggled with that quite a bit. Um, I always put pressure on myself to make sure that inventories were even uh, and made sure that employees were doing the very best job possible. Uh, I was really worried about upsells like cleaning kits and magazine subscriptions for the first time. And it was kind of difficult. But at the same time, that was also uh, when the Dreamcast was introduced. And I thought that it was pretty neat to be able to use my position as a store manager and really get people interested in the Dreamcast because it was something that I believed in personally. We actually received uh, demo Dreamcast units a couple of months before release, including copies of Sonic Adventure and Blue Stinger. So I was actually able to play through the game several times before I was able to get my hands on my own system uh, in September of 1999. So I thought that was pretty neat too. Plus working at that particular location introduced me to games such as uh, Medal of Honor, which is the first first-person shooter that I really played and enjoyed. Um, games like, um, gee, I'm trying to think here off the top of my head. I talked about Superman 64 before. Uh, that was quite the experience in and of itself. Uh, Pokemon Snap was another big one, big game during that time frame. Uh, Cyber Tiger was another one that not even, not that it was a good game, but just I remember it. And perhaps the most interesting memory of my time at that particular Funko Land store as a manager was the uh, the explosive popularity of Pokemon cards. Uh, Pokemon cards were a big thing back then, and I'll never forget one day when I was working in the store, and I had two kids, probably between 10 and 11 years old, come in with this big jar of change. So they dump it on the counter, and, you know, can you please count this? We want to buy Pokemon cards. And I was feeling generous that day, so I said, sure. I counted everything, and they had enough to buy a full box of booster packs. So the two start tearing into booster packs, and then I hear out of the uh, out of the corner of the room, one of them just starts freaking out. I can't believe it! I can't believe it! So the other kid says, "What? What did you find?" And uh, the original kid holds up a foil Charizard card. Now, those of you who remember Pokemon cards remember how rare those guys used to be, and the two kids went to blows over the card. Again, you're trying to imagine a fairly small video game store with a narrow walkway, and there is a full-on brawl going on over this particular Pokemon card. Now, I remember uh, letting them go for about 30 seconds or so because I was in awe of uh, just how much violence was going on over one card. Now, I didn't understand the Pokemon trading card game. I didn't understand the big deal. I thought the artwork was cool, but I didn't understand how it was played. But after a while... Uh, I didn't want anything bad to happen to these kids or anything bad to happen inside the store. So I kind of had to pick them both up and put them out the door and have them resolve their differences outside. But that was uh, certainly interesting um, to go from a relatively calm, you know, what did you get, what did you get, to, oh my god, look what I got, and then chaos. Um, and any, any of you who worked in retail at that time and remember how big Pokemon cards were, can probably empathize or even have your own war stories as to what you saw. So that was uh, that was kind of neat. Uh, I did wind up leaving my position as store manager for Funko Land in the, uh, the late winter, early spring of 2000. Uh, I went to a tech support job. But I'll never forget uh, the time that I spent at Funko Land stores and how excited for video games that the time there made me. Uh, it wasn't perfect by any stretch, and there was certainly some pressure involved, as there is in any job that we work in these days. Um, 
But Funko Land was really my jumping off point for future roles in video game retail. And for that, I'm grateful. So uh, Funko Land, here's to you. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today and also the videos that I've shot over the last few weeks. My name is Peter, and I thank you very much for watching. Until the next time, I will see you on the next Retro Unscripted. Until then, take care.